Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I'm going to show you how I retouch this photo of the Eiffel Tower. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Remedy. I'm a French photographer from the very rainy city of Paris, France. And I make one to two tutorial per week. But right now I'm doing a challenge, 30 videos in 30 days. This is I think video number 18. All right, I want to show you how I took this photo of the Eiffel Tower right now. Alright, so I want to tell you the story behind this photo, which is one of my favorite Eiffel Tower shots in a long time. And um, I'm not going to bore you to show you all the photos I got around the Eiffel Tower, but this was really the best one. And I want to show you how I did this one. So basically what I did is, uh, and that one is doing really well on social media, I was really surprised. So that's basically the first shot, and that's the second shot. Um, I did an actual loan exposure. I didn't use my app. I did a. I went to F22 ISO 50 to forcing loan exposure. So I had five seconds. So this, this uh, uh, you know, carousel was turning, and uh, basically all I did was take um, these two photos, right click, go to photo merge, panorama. So it's two raw file, and you know every time I do a panorama, I first do the panorama and then I do the retouching. So. You know, basically the software gave me several options, spherical, uh, cylindrical, and perspective. On this one, I went to perspective and I did the boundary wrap around because I thought it was pretty cool. Or maybe just a little bit like this. Okay. And then I clicked on merge. So that's going to merge both photo into one row file. And then I'm going to retouch that row file and see what we can do with uh, the magic of... Uh, you know Photoshop now sometimes when you get you know really weird uh, lens distortion like this panorama because you know I was very close I was shooting at 16 you sometimes have to do some Photoshop magic so here I am and basically what I did is I first did some basic retouching here in uh, in you know in Lightroom so I open up the shadows remember even so if it's a uh, it's a it's a raw file it's still totally something you can do in Lightroom um, and uh, it's amazing. So I'm going to open the whites, do the black. So then what I did is I added a bit of clarity. You know, if there is no clouds, I always add clarity. I think I'm going to boost my white even more, uh, my exposure ev even more. I really wanted this to be bright. Maybe just, you know, add a bit of yellow and a bit of magenta. But, you know, very fast, I had to go into Photoshop. So I'm going to right click, edit edit into Photoshop. There is still a lot of work to be done on this photo. So I'm here in Photoshop and uh, so I'm going to duplicate the basic layer as usual and I'm going to zoom out very small and the first thing I'm going to do is press Command T for Free Transform or you can go to Edit Free Transform. Now there is an option that I love in Free Transform is to if you hold on the Command key on your keyboard and you just move the corner you can basically distort the photo however you want. The problem is that I just want it because I think it's too squatch. The problem if I do that, you see it's going to come out of this. So I have to do something first. And what I'm going to do is use the crop tool, make sure content aware is on on the crop tool, and I'm going to click here. And that's a new option that came out on Photoshop, I think a little while ago. When you use the crop tool with content aware and you're missing blue sky, automatically, Photoshop is going to create the blue sky for you. Check this out. Isn't that amazing? And now I can go back to my Command T, hold down the Command key on my keyboard, and I can play around. I just want to make my Eiffel Tower, you know, a little more present, a little less squash. It was too squash, you know, and uh, something like this. I wanted to, yeah, maybe even more. I really want it to be the grandeur of the Eiffel Tower. Okay, and once you're done with that, then of course uh, you can crop the photo, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to crop it back. Uh, I think I'm going to crop this out. I'm going to crop this out and crop this out like this. 
So that's the final result. And it's still a huge file. I mean, if I zoom in, press Z, uh, go on 100%, it's a huge file. Don't be fooled by how small it is. Now, two things I want to do with this to make it even more dramatic. The first one is there is a blue sky without the smallest, smallest, uh, you know, uh, cloud. So I'm going to open up my library cloud. And uh, by the way, you will see a link below this video where you can buy all my clouds uh, and all my uh, um, lens flare. I'll, uh, I'll put a link there. So I'm going to drag and drop this uh, over the photo. And uh, I'm just going to make this, it's a smart object, so I'm going to make it the size that I want. And I'm going to press enter, and it's a smart object, which is really cool. And I'm going to put this into soft light. By putting it into soft light, it totally blends and just adds that little bit, bit of texture. Now, you just have to make sure wherever you, you put it, that there is not like a little line. It's so invisible, it's not even funny. It's so great. So all I had to do was change the blending mode. Last but not least, there is a little light beam that goes every night on the Eiffel Towel, and I thought that was missing. So I'm going to go to my library module, and I'm going to take the um, uh, my uh, flare and glow, and I'm going to take this glow, which is very similar to the one that they're doing, and I'm going to create, I'm going to put this over the Eiffel Tower, and press Enter, and boom, I'm done. Just kidding. I'm going to put this into screen mode. Screen makes anything black becomes transparent. I'm going to create a mask. Take a little brush. Make sure black is my foreground color. Make sure opacity is at 100. And I'm just going to you know, brush the corners here with the corner of my brush to uh, make this you know, go uh, and, and blend this a little more. And that's basically what I did. Okay, and, and usually when I'm done with that, I can lower the opacity to, to make it, you know, there even more. I can even move my move tool to really, you know, I think I'm just going to put that the opacity at 100. And if you think you're missing a little bit, I can you can go back and make sure you can press X so that white is your foreground color and make sure that the glow is really there. And basically, voila, that's it. I did file, close. I'm going to save it. It's going to appear back into Lightroom. And I usually like to... Give it a little bit of a, a shine in Lightroom. And uh, so the only thing I was going to do on this one is just make the bottom of the photo darker because uh, I think this is really not nice. And maybe, you know, sometime I, you know, I just reboost the whites a little bit, open the shadows a little bit, bring down some of the highlights, do some black, just to give it more contrast. Uh, actually, the, that's what, that was my first try. And this is my second try. But, you know, same idea. Actually, this one has more clarity, more vibrance, something like this. And voila. So, you know, it's just a creative way. So you can download for a very little amount of money all my glows and flares uh, below this video and all my skies. All right, my name is you. I hope you like this. And I'm doing this video also to promote my movie called The Hollywoodans. It's coming out on the 16th of May in a few days. We only have a few days to get some pre-orders. So if you didn't get a chance to pre-order the movie, please do it now. And I will love you forever. It's a great movie about reaching your dreams. At least I hope it is a great movie. You will find out on the 16th of May. Also, I have a new full Photoshop course that came out, Photoshop for Photographer. Amazing course, 61 videos, 21 projects. People are raving about it. It's a great course if you ever wanted to buy Sorry, if you ever wanted to learn Photoshop, that's the course you have been looking for all your life. Mesdames et Messieurs, I'm on the Alexander 3 Bridge and I will see you tomorrow.